So last week we talked about Daniel and this this kind of revelation or this statement has been sort of brewing in my heart and that's based on Daniel's experience. Today's decisions are become the reflexes of tomorrow. So decisions we make today become our reflexes tomorrow. And so I made the decision long ago, and I've, and I've held and I've, and I've stated this time and time again. I've been, I've been firm with people. I've been uh, sometimes a little harsh with people, a little hard on people. And that the statement holds true, and I, and I believe it today as much as I believed it last week, and that's YouTube is not church. Live stream is, is not church. Okay? Now, many are saying that it can be, or, or perhaps it's best right now, okay? <clears throat> Some of the reasons that are being given as, as to why for a time it would be acceptable to not congregate, but rather to use social media and live streaming technologies to have church are, are, are as follows, and I believe are, are, are thrust away by the exact scenario that Daniel experienced. Now, some will say that they're okay with the government strongly suggesting that we stay home instead of going to church because there's a, there's a foreseeable end to it. So because the government has only said it's two weeks, there's a foreseeable end, there's a deadline to it, then we're okay with that. We're going to close the doors of the church house, the meeting house, and we're going to live stream and say, well, if you recall it, Daniel had a 30-day deadline to his requirement to not pray to anyone but to King Nebuchadnezzar. And yet Daniel stood. Also, the decree that came, and this is the same argument that I've heard presented, was that we're okay with this because it's not like the government is just picking on churches to not congregate together. They're saying that the sports is sports entertainment will be closed. They're saying that that the bars will be closed. They're saying that that um, unnecessary um, shopping stores are going to be closed. Right. So the decree went and was aimed at everyone, but was not the charge given to Daniel the same, where everyone in the whole kingdom would for those 30 days not pray to anyone but King Nebuchadnezzar. And yet Daniel stood and prayed three times a day as he was wont to do. So they say, okay, well, since it's only for a time, then we can close the doors. Oh, since it's armed at everybody, then we can close the doors. They're also saying that biblical or that that quarantine and separation is biblical and it's found in an example of Leviticus chapter 13 and yet I went through Leviticus chapter 13 and do you know what I found I didn't find everybody staying in their own home as quarantine I found a priest looking and I looked and I and I I highlight every time in blue that I saw look the priest shall look on him he shall consider him he shall see him when he sees him when he looks in his sight when he looks when he looks when he looks then shall he shut up him that hath the plague when he sees the plague upon him. Amen. Okay? This is not a blanket everyone quarantine themselves. The quarantine was for him that has a visible issue to be separate from the congregation so that they can still meet safely. The congregation was being protected from the one that was put up, shut up, because he had the plague. That was what was to take place biblically. Verse 46, it also says, All the days wherein the plague shall be on him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. Without the camp shall his singular habitation be. And so to say that, God, that, that, that by biblical principle we have reason to not congregate and rather stay at our homes and live stream, I stand by it. YouTube is not church. Nor is there any biblical mandate to do so. Daniel stood, even though there was a timeline to the decree. Daniel stood, even though that it was aimed at everyone and it was consistent. And the, the discernment is a visual look for the 
the problem, the, the defect on somebody, the uncleanness on somebody, and that man is to be separated. Now, I'm trying to be respectful in all this because there's very difficult times in front of us, and we've already been through some, okay? And so these men of God are set with a decision to make, and they've all made their own unique decisions. But my conviction is that as we did a four time, as I did a four time, that's what I have to keep on doing. Biblically speaking, I think this is a Daniel in the lion's den scenario. The, the government has said, not by decree yet, by firm suggestion that we're to do a certain thing. We're to separate ourselves and not congregate from any, uh, they say, non-essentials. Well, I think church is essential. Amen. Amen. And so, and so there, there I stand, and this is, this is the position that I've made. Of course we have made, we have made provision, and, and we've given the same, the same charge that we've always given to everybody, is that if you feel sick, stay home. If you think you're at risk, stay home. We're not legalists in that every single day you must be in church, and you know that, we practice that. My son is, is, is prone to getting sick almost repeatedly throughout the winter time. Cold and flu season comes, and he just catches this stuff like a sponge. And so and him, and, and by extension, my wife stay home quite often in the winter, unfortunately. But that is biblical containment. That is biblical quarantine, according to Leviticus. We see the runny nose. We see the sniffling. We see the coughing. And for the sake of the congregation that will meet without fail, we quarantine the one the two, the three, whosoever has the actual plague upon them. Now, we can continue on, and the thing that I noticed was that the first mention of the congregation in the, in the whole Bible, it's here in Exodus chapter 12. Now, like I said, I don't believe church or the congregation to be a non-essential meeting. I believe it's mandated by God. And I actually believe I don't even have the right to close the congregation for a scenario like this. Now we closed the church for weather before, but you know what that was? That was the, the priest seeing a problem and making a decision to to not assemble. Okay, there was a visual enemy. It was it was a like three feet of snow in Canada, right? Okay, but for an unseen, undiagnosed, un invisible enemy. I don't believe we're given the mandate because the mandate comes from God. And so if I'm going to say, okay, and this is going to sound like I'm pushing the boundaries a little bit, but if, if I make the decision to say church is off, I have just spoken contrary to the law of God. And the congregation should look at me for making that decision and go, well, what in the world? We're, we're commanded to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But so much the more as we see the day approaching. And how many of us have sat there today and said, whoa, I see the day approaching. Amen. Okay? So Amen. I, I don't have the authority to, to stop the assembly. Okay? That's, that's my conviction. You know, greater men than I have made the decision to do so. But I just, I, I'm just, I'm just, I don't even want to. I've always been resolved that when God says it, I do it for the most part, no matter the consequences in areas like this, because I'm not, I'm not smart enough or capable enough or, or what have you enough to, to make decisions like that and, and to stand by them. I just, my life is simpler. I have fewer decisions to make for myself when I just let God make the decision. Amen. And he says, be in church. 